This is uh, interesting because uh, in this series of workshops, um, I think this is the third time I'm presenting and the workshop has basically seen the birth uh, and is now seeing the kind of death of phasing out of this model system. And uh, I hope I can demonstrate how we, how we will continue into the future. Um, of course, I'm presenting here just by myself, but there's a lot of people who were involved in this. And I think Knut is there and just shared to me. Um, there are some people involved in the development uh, that are that establish new corporation like uh, Lars with PDAF or Joseph Chang with uh, Schism System, uh, people from ESMF who helped. Right. Uh, what we haven't talked about so far is is really going deeper into the Earth system. Now, lots of the applications are atmosphere ocean couplings. And um, at our Coastal Institute, we are very much interested in the sea floor and water column coupling so one layer below basically and in water depths that are typically much shallower than 10 meters which is a kind of a water depth where global models come to their limitations so we have very different domains and scales from many of the other systems different communities that we involve and uh, also there's a great uh, diversity of modeling solutions for coastal systems uh, where we have the emphasis on interfaces, interfaces between the seafloor and the water, between the different biota, between chemistry and physics, waves touching, uh, reaching the bottom. So we wrote a summary paper a uh, couple of years back where we basically stated that models are not made for interfaces or the current coupling systems are not. Uh, up to now, there has been no coastal modeling environment that enables a modular and flexible model integration. And uh, we needed this kind of modular approach and cross-system approach to answer some questions um, that are particular to coastal systems, especially feedbacks. Um, and these feedbacks are not necessarily more complicated than ocean atmosphere wave feedbacks, feedbacks but certainly less understood. Um, one of those challenges is to understand how nutrients are distributed along the coast, and that has important consequences for policies that try to reduce the nutrient input to our coastal seas. So we are working towards uh, the Water Framework Directive or the Marine Strategy uh, Framework Directive. Now, we typically do not have just three models that we want to couple, wave, atmosphere, ocean, typically, but we are looking at systems that integrate more than 10 different components that we want to couple. And uh, also, we are looking at a long development cycle. In biological and ecological models, we often do not have the theoretical understanding that we have in physical systems and physical models. So there's a lot of trial and error going on. And uh, we really have to see that we have a very fast development cycle from adding something in the model, playing around with a specific model code, and then bringing that into a coupled system very fast. Also, much of the biological experiments are done in a lab or uh, 1D, 0D environment. So we wanted to get this lab uh, formulation in the models to a 3D application for regional C. Um, we evolved our modeling system, which is really an application layer, and you will hear about Maple later today, um, an application layer on top of uh, ESMF uh, with two concepts. One is flexibility, and uh, yeah, I'll give that to read for you. I can't quite read my own slides. Um, so if you just scan across this, yeah, we have the flex. We want the flexibility to go from zero D to three D very fast, and to encapsulate the many different model solutions that are available for the coast. Right, the equitability is our second concept, and um, in this concept, we wanted to basically get away from our historical development where numerical weather atmosphere and hydrodynamics play the larger role in a coastal systems. Because much of our development is revolving around biological and chemical questions, we 
posited that chemistry and biology are equally important um, as the physical systems. And of course, this is not true. Not all models are created equal. But uh, with our system, we try to go a step towards that equitability between models and also between equitability of data models and science models. And we've seen this also in Marena Wertenstein's uh, CMAP system, for example, that they can easily exchange data and science model applications. Right, this system needs to go up and running in minutes. Now, if you copy this script uh, to your computer in a Linux shell uh, under optimal conditions, uh, you should have the system uh, outputting a model simulation of four years for a North Sea station uh, with just these 10 lines of not so complicated code. And what you might notice is that in the last line, this Moscow executable, we basically have an application layer uh, that makes ESMF usable for a coast, but we also have a generator for coupling systems and the deployment tools for a uh, deployment tool for HPC environments. And this is an overview of the granularity of our model system. And you see, um, yeah, there's roughly, I would say, 40 bubbles there that you could identify. These are all coupled components that uh, can be flexibly coupled with one another um, and, of course, exchange data, exchange control flow between all these model components. And we really demonstrated that we can go from 1D applications. Here is uh, a benthic pelagic coupled application that was looking at early diagenesis of nutrients in the sea floor via two-dimensional applications where we, for example, investigate the suspended uh, particulate matter transport um, in, a, in an estuary to full 3D examples. Um, we validated, uh, we are currently validating this model system and uh, we have just a paper out where we were really horrified by this plot which shows uh, the model data uh, comparison between the modeled mean and variability um, of uh, chlorophyll, so a rather difficult to predict quantity in our regional sea uh, for the past decades. And uh, you see this uh, model uh, data match is kind of hard to believe, but uh, we did our best to screw this up. We didn't. So uh, I guess uh, we have a very good uh, validation, scientific validation of our model here. And this does not apply only to spatial variability, but also to temporal variability. Uh, we have some very good uh, station data and also frequent satellite observations of our coastal sea here. And in the top row, you see a uh, several year cycle of uh, dissolved inorganic nitrogen, which is one of the important uh, traces for biotic activity and of course for eutrophication in a coastal sea. And uh, you see how well we simulate with the model the seasonal cycles of this quantity. And below uh, is shown a pattern matching between satellite and um, model simulation. And uh, never before have, I think, uh, we've been able to come so close to the regional patterns that we observe in um, biotic quantities here, chlorophyll. So having this model validated, um, we actually can do some interesting uh, ecological studies. And uh, on the left, uh, we have a study where we investigated the effect of the um, shell of, uh, of clams that uh, live at the bottom of our sandy sea and that stabilize and destabilize, of course, uh, depending on the current regime, the um, the uh, seafloor sediment. And wherever it's red, there is a uh, negative effect of uh, stabilization of, so accumulation of sediment and blue, there's a destabilization of sediment. So you can see really that biota might have a large effect on uh, the sediment regime in a coastal sea. On the right-hand side, uh, we have a quick glance of the climatological effect of what wind farms uh, might be doing to our 
local e uh, to our regional ecosystems. This is a picture of the North Sea, and everywhere where there's red, this is basically the additional filtration of uh, chlorophyll by the planned wind parks in the North Sea. All right, so we had this system up and running with our hydrodynamic model GETEM, and uh, you saw Tobias Bauer talking about GETEM icon uh, yesterday. And uh, we are now taming a new beast, which is uh, the SCISM, semi-implicit cross-scale hydroscience integrated system model developed at VIMS, uh, Virginia uh, Marine Science Institute. And this is really a beast, and you saw it's a it's really a system, a coupled uh, system already by itself, monolithically coupled, and we wanted to modularize this, so make it more flexible. So what we did is we first uh, implemented a framework for aquatic biogeochemical models, FABM interface, so that you have a flexible array of about 20 to 30 uh, biogeochemical applications that you can run within this ocean model. This FABM interface has been implemented to several other models like uh, NEMO, uh, FECOM. So uh, some of you might be, uh, might be, might know this one. And we also added ESMF and UOPSI caps uh, to SCISM for the domain coupling. Now there were this uh, ESMF code is currently standalone. We haven't followed the recommendations by ESMF yet to uh, to add this to the main model code, but it's under development. We uh, added, of course, regridding because SCISM is an unstructured grid model. We have modular I.O. similar to what Xios can do for you or XIOS can do for you. So uh, time uh, integration of input or in interpolation of input, time interpolation of output. Uh, we have a generic FABM host implemented via the ESMF interface, uh, which unfortunately, and this is a task for several of the ocean systems that we're dealing with, need uh, transport hooks. And uh, this is one of the applications we do with SCISM, an unstructured model in the Elbe River. And if you look at this uh, river mouth estuary, and then at the small inset in the, in the bottom, you see the harbor of Hamburg, uh, very finely resolved. Right, so what did we want to do? We wanted to have this uh, Schism Ecosmo applications that you just saw, which is Ecosmo is an ecosystem model, basically predicting the biological quantities uh, in a regional sea or river, yeah, coupled in a, with FABM in the Schism system. And we wanted to couple that to a seafloor um, diagenetic um, model, which is here called Omex Dia, developed by Kalina Sutard and Neos, and um, have these models, uh, yeah, feedback with each other. Now, that wasn't too easy because, of course, the ocean model has no idea about the sea floor. So what did we do? We used the modular system. And this is what it looks like now. So you see in Schism, the blue bubble, yeah, we are using the process model coupler FABM to reach out to the ECOSPO model the, and to transport the traces uh, that are uh, represented in ECOSMO through the ocean. And it has an ESMF cap that uh, is integrated into the yellow system, which is our Moscow coupled system, uh, which speaks ESMF to a unified output, uh, input, uh, providing restarts, uh, providing couplers and mediators, and to a generic, uh, Fabm benthic um, host, yeah, that includes another instance of Fabm. So we have two instances of the same model running here, Fabm benthic and Fabm in schism, that then um, operates the diagenetic model on XDR. And this is all a uh, coupled two way. So let me finish by looking at the status. We have a uh, several new models uh, and the color didn't come out here. So we don't have ROMs, we're working on MIT GCM. We're not working on FISOM Coastal. Um, ICON you saw is being implemented by Tobias Bauer and this will be compatible uh, with our system uh, foreseeably. We have a Macrobentos uh, model. We are dev developing Seagrass. Lars Nerger just mentioned that we are working on parallel data assimilation. Um, one of the things that I want to, to learn from, uh, from uh, Rocky, and I'm really grateful that he introduced this architectural point of view on, uh, on data simulation is 
It currently resides in the NUAPSI cap, the assimilation to, um, to schism, but really this, uh, I hope we could get this into a driver sometime. Um, and we're working with the NEMS people on a worth coupling uh, with schism. Right, I think uh, that's it. Um, there's some reading in the last slide if you want to have a look at this, um, but I'm open for questions now. Thanks.